Thus begins the dry season. We do all of our traveling in the fall and winter, and in the spring and summer we don't really travel. It leaves us with not a lot of content to put on a YouTube channel that focuses on Christmas travel. So what I'm going to do is share with you something that is interesting to me. I have started collecting books on Christmas history and Christmas books in general. I've always loved to read, I like history, and I love Christmas. So these include books that are picture books about Christmas in America, books about Christmas history, books about Christmas tradition, books that were influential in bringing Christmas to America, making Christmas what it is today. I have books from the 1800s in here, and I've got books that were published in the last five years. The first two books I wanna talk about, um, and I got these at a rare bookstore in Stillwater, Minnesota. So this book is called The Book of Christmas, and this book is just called Christmas and they were published in 1888 and 1934. These books, especially because they, the time they were written and have a heavy religious slant, so they don't focus a lot on the more commercial traditions of Christmas. In fact, this one is so religiously slanted that it is literally dedicated to the Christ child. So this book digs a lot into the nativity story and why certain traditions are based on religion, like why is Snow White? why are holly berries red and they tie it all back to the birth of Jesus and miracles he performed as a baby, but more of a deep dive into uh, the religion of Christmas. And this one, it's got a lot of traditions from other countries and stuff like that, but it also hits religion as well, especially in the beginning. And then it does a deep dive for some reason on Shakespeare for like 10 pages, talks about how amazing Shakespeare is. I guess he was like a huge deal in the 1800s, I don't know. What I did after this was kind of went on Amazon and I searched for a Christmas history book. And this next book is the one that popped up. So this book is called Christmas A Biography by Judith Flanders. And this is a much more modern book. And what it is is an overview of essentially Christmas from 1800 to today. The problem is that it doesn't go into any detail on anything, but this is a really good primer for Christmas history. Now, my favorite thing about this book is that in the back, it has recommended readings. And these recommended readings are essentially where I went online and I just bought a bunch of the books from here. Um, and that led me to this next book, which is probably my favorite Christmas history book that I've read. And it is called Merry Christmas by Carol Ann Marling, Celebrating America's Greatest Holiday. And this specifically focuses on modern Christmas in America and what made it what it is today. So it's gonna go into details about why we wrap Christmas gifts in wrapping paper and the origins of that. Why do we put up Christmas lights and the origins of that. Modern Christmas carols, how they came about. The book does an awesome job about taking all the best things about Christmas, like window shopping, like on Fifth Avenue in New York, that was not a thing before the 1900s, and how that became to be this huge kind of tourist destination for people all over to go and see these window displays during Christmas. So it really hits on all the major things about Christmas and how they started and how they make you feel feel and why they make you feel that way. I really love this book. This book is called The Battle for Christmas. It is by Stephen Niesenbaum and it focuses almost entirely in the 19th century. It digs into the late 1700s but you're essentially talking 1800 to 1899. So this book really dives deep into how and why Christmas became the huge maelstrom of holiday enjoyment that it's become today. And spoiler alert, it's not because of religion. The Puritans in the early 1800s, they really tried to stamp down Christmas celebrations, right? They didn't like it. They didn't like the idea of a holy day to them being celebrated in a manner that was taking away at all from the religiosity of everything. Is that a word? I don't know, but it sounded right. Let's stick with it. It does a deep dive on the night before Christmas, which has a really interesting history to it. And it introduced America to Santa Claus. It goes into the antebellum South and how plantation owners would use Christmas as a kind of like purge night for their slaves so that they would let the slaves do things they could never do. They had 48 hours of freedom and how that excitement of a purge night kind of evolved into the slaves taking Christmas back and making their own traditions and kind of pushing away from their reliance on the slave masters to allow them to enjoy this holiday. If that doesn't interest you at all, if you'd rather just stay totally modern, then definitely stick with Merry Christmas, Christmas in America. 
but if you're looking for a little bit of both, this book kind of bridges the gap between them. And that kind of segues into what kind of excites me more about Old Christmas stuff, which ironically enough is the name of the next book. It's called Old Christmas. Now this book is really interesting. So this is a really early edition. This book was printed in 1876. This book was printed in 1876. Old Christmas is written by Washington Irving. It was integral in bringing Christmas to America. Before this book, nobody really knew how Christmas was celebrated in other countries. It was barely celebrated in America. It was known of, but it wasn't a thing that people got together for around Christmas. But until Washington Irving wrote a book about what it was like to have a very wealthy, tradition-laden English Christmas, nobody in America knew what that was like. The thing is, none of what he experienced in this book actually happened to him. Now it's certainly based on traditions that occurred in England and certain things that were going on in random spots around England, but what he did was take all of these traditions, all of these histories, and put them into one fictional account to make it seem like one family was celebrating in this majestic way for Christmas. And it was so intoxicating to read, so fascinating for Americans, and so they all thought this was how all of England celebrated Christmas every year, and they decided that they were kind of appropriate that and make it how they celebrated Christmas. Those traditions like wassailing and Christmas caroling and going to church on Christmas Eve and throwing big lavish parties, doing all kinds of exciting games and activities with the children on Christmas Eve, those were not things that were happening in America and they were also not things that were happening regularly in England around Christmas. And because of that, because of fooling the entire American public, Christmas is what it is today. Just three years after this book came out, Clement Clark Moore wrote The Night Before Christmas, which was integral in making Santa part of the zeitgeist. Santa Claus was not a thing. A lot of people think that Santa was brought over to America by Dutch immigrants. It wasn't. Santa was not a thing in America until the night before Christmas. This is an image of what Santa Claus looked like at that time. He was an elf-like creature, very small. If you think about the words in the night before Christmas, eight tiny reindeer, like Santa was a, Santa was like an elf. So he wasn't like a big, jolly, plump guy that we know him as today. Thomas Nast and Norman Rockwell really helped develop that image of him. Everyone is familiar with the Christmas movie, A Christmas Story. It's called A Christmas Story. It's by Gene Shepard. It's actually pulled out of a larger book called In God We Trust, but it's all in that same really interesting narrative writing style where he speaks like an adult as like an 11 year old. And the book is actually really good. And it's a great insight into what Christmas was like in Indiana during the Great Depression. He based it on his childhood and it's absolutely fascinating. And it's a really easy read and I definitely recommend picking it up. These are huge books that are essentially a collection of St. Nicholas Magazine, a magazine, a monthly magazine that was published between 1873 and 1943. What this was, was a magazine for kids and it was a way to get them to buy stuff. There were all kinds of different parables and tales and they kind of all alluded to a product of some kind. You can see the toys they bought, you can see the things that they were interested in, and you can really get a feel for how Christmas graduated from children being treated as adults and children who were expected to behave in a certain mature manner into the transition of children are allowed to be kids and enjoy Christmas and play with toys. That was a transition that occurred in the 1800s. This is the 1932 version of the St. Nicholas magazine. And this one's really interesting too, because you're kind of deep in the Great Depression at this point. A lot of these ads are for cheap, really cheap things and how to buy things cheap and how to make things on your own. It's just a really cool book to flip through and it's kind of just a picture of that time, especially at that time that a Christmas story is based on. That's in the 1930s, this is from the 1930s. So you could probably imagine that Ralphie would have picked up one of these and flipped through it and maybe seen an ad for the Red Rider BB gun. These are more like coffee table books. This one is a Barnes and Noble pickup. It's a Christmas treasury. It's got gorgeous binding and it's essentially got like all the major Christmas holiday stories. It's got a Christmas carol in it. L. Frank Baum, he wrote a story about the origin of Santa Claus. That's in here. There's a lot of poems and stuff like that. The Night Before Christmas is in here. So I bust this out during the holidays every year and I usually read one or two stories to Olivia. 
This one is Saturday Evening Post Christmas book now Norman Rockwell. He drew art for the Saturday Evening Post. It was integral in making Santa what he is today in America. So his images kind of portrayed what was going on in America and it was interesting because he actually had to draw them in the summer. So what he would do is kind of guess what the themes of the holiday would be, like what was going on in the world, because a lot of the stuff he drew was during World War II, and so he wasn't sure where the war was going to be, so he did a lot of allusions to military men and supporting your troops and Santa supporting the troops. I mean, just the artwork is just beautiful. This one is one of the first Christmas books I bought before I was even collecting Christmas books. And it's just Christmas in America. And this book is where we got a lot of the ideas for where we should visit during kind of our first year of Christmas, where we went to Santa Claus, Indiana, North Pole, Alaska, that kind of stuff. This book we got when we visited Rhode Island. And it's a gorgeous book about Christmas and landmark homes and how the super ultra rich and the museum homes kind of decorate for Christmas. And then Christmas in the Cottage. It's got a lot of holiday pictures for more kind of a country Christmas, more nostalgic feel. This is also a really cool book, gorgeous. That's what I do is I collect Christmas books now. I've got a few lined up to read. St. Nicholas of Myra, Bari in Manhattan, the biography of a legend. This seems boring to me. I'm not looking forward to reading it. It seems super dense, but we shall see. I'm gonna read it anyway. Christmas in America. So this is gonna be something similar to hopefully my favorite Christmas history book, where it kind of does a deep dive on traditions in America. Uh, this one is called Christmas Traditions, which I think is just a general overview of different countries and how the traditions came to be. And then this one is Santa Land Diaries. It's by David Sedaris, who's Amy Sedaris's brother, and he's a really funny writer. And he worked at a Santa Claus photo station at a mall for a few years, and these are his stories. So that's gonna be good. And then Inventing the Christmas Tree, which I'm looking forward to because there's a lot of kind of mythology about where the Christmas tree came from. Um, did the Germans bring it over? Did Prince Albert, who was from Germany, bring it to the Queen? And then they took a famous picture and that made it popular. Did it just kind of trickle over naturally? This book will dive into that. Not every video during the summer is gonna be me looking through Christmas books with you. We will see you next week. Please like and subscribe and we will try to get you some interesting content.